Welcome, everyone. I would like today to share some interesting insights on the ongoing tragedy of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Astrology won't save the world, but at least it can provide understanding some of the dynamics. So let's see how things are unfolding, understanding larger cycles beyond this particular um, peak of intensity. And looking ahead to also see um, how things may be evolving. So looking at Israel's natal creation, um, we, we obviously see a south node conjunct Chiron in the first house, which shows the memory of loss and wound and persecution and the aspiration with the north node in Taurus to establish stability, to have land and to hopefully move beyond death and despair. Obviously, since the North Node is in the seventh house of the state of Israel, we can derive from that that land has to be shared, has to be divided. I mean, some of you, most of you probably saw how tiny this stripe of land is compared to the whole Middle East and the whole world. And so we're talking about really um, minuscule divisions that are so critical for the two people. That's how absurd, you know, things are. The Middle East itself, um, geodetically, is symbolized by the sign of Taurus and Leo. So it's not surprising that these are the luminary position of Israel because it's very strongly embedded in, in the identity and the forces of the Middle East. So, you know, the state was created in an eclipse season. The sun is on the north node. The moon is squaring the node. So it's between... Um, you know, it's just after a solar eclipse occurred about a week prior. And eclipses are always major portals, activators, and a great sense of destiny, which this nation, which is at the gate of Africa, Asia, and Europe, um, definitely holds. So the aspiration for peace is both in the North Node in the seventh house, the ruler Venus is in the ninth house, which speaks of the need to unite religions, nations, and to provide safety, cancer, and home for everyone. Far from that, we are. Um, when planets are squaring the nodes, there's always tension between the North and South Node. There's a tendency to be in, you know, to not establish balance. It's one extreme or the other. And here we obviously see the return, the constant return to um, defense and, and loss and grief um, on every side. Uh, and so when we, when we, look at the the evolutionary intention we understand that there is a solution and that um, it has to do with land taurus and it has to do with safety the ruler of the north node is in cancer more about this chart you know we can unpack this look at the biblical signatures here and the deep deep uh, significance it has not only for the region but maybe uh, for all of us 
But I want to, you know, move on to our current circumstances. So Israel went through, you know, a long history of war and peace. Um, the first peace accord was with Egypt in, in 1977-78, then followed in, in 1994 with Jordan. And this was a time of great hope, the, the early 90s, where um, then President Rabin, Prime Minister Rabin, um, along with Bill Clinton, who was the U.S. president, and Yasser Arafat, who was the head of the Palestinian movement, the PLO, initiated the Oslo Accord, an accord that had for purpose to basically a plan for peace. And it was obviously not a perfect plan because it did not survive. But uh, there were there was a lot of progress after years of animosity and distrust. Finally, they started shaking hands. You know, things were looking up. There was there were differences, but there was a path to negotiation, which was then abruptly interrupted by the assassination of Israeli Prime Minister Rabin on November fourth. 1994, you know, things always happen in October and November. So what we see in this chart of the assassination is that the nodes were in Libra, Aries, on the ascendant of the country and squared by Uranus, Neptune. So it was the whole you know, important of the transit of the conjunction between Neptune and Uranus, which created so many changes for the whole world. I mean, this was what we, we recognize as the time of the internet revolution, right? 1993. Um, but on a social political level, this was a time to finally uh, advance, change the mold, redefine um, our way of thinking, our habits, our attachment. Now you see that Neptune and Uranus are crossing the IC of the state of Israel, which has to do with the place where it's most vulnerable. You know, the fourth house, the IC represents the people, you know, the, 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 the civilians, um, and, and of course, the sense of security and home. So with Uranus, Neptune there, it's a revolution, which could mean there's progress and development, but it could also obviously mean there's chaos and disruption. So, you know, when we look at such an act as an assassination, we have to also look at Mars and indeed, Mars at the time was conjunct Jupiter in Sagittarius. So we see that this act was driven by ideology and, you know, uh, fanaticism, really. Uh, so interesting to note, these outer planets on these late Capricorn degrees on the IC of the country and the square to the nodes um, in Aries Libra. Following the assassination, the country went through a lot of ups and downs, which we will unpack um, to some degree. Now, the perpetrator uh, name was Igal Amir. And he was basically against the peace process. He wanted to sabotage the peace process, and and he did. So he ended up in jail for life, but his mission was accomplished, which was um, to drive Israel to the far right, ultimately. 
But first and foremost, immediately, it was for him to stop negotiation, to stop the peace process. So he came from a place of, uh, as we said, zeal and extreme ideologies, um, we know, which see basically uh, the movement of wanting to reclaim the biblical size of Israel um, and, and not have to share, divide the land. So this is his chart in the center. He's a Gemini, a fourth house angle, opposing Neptune on the angle. So you see how he, you know, Neptune on the angle, the ideology, the the martyrdom, you know, his act of, in a way, self-sacrifice for what he saw as a greater cause to save his country um, was transited by Pluto, which obviously brings that aspect of shadow and destruction and um, and danger, which you know, we can argue um, fueled his delusional uh, ideology. Uh, Mars was opposing his son and squaring the nodes past it. So we see how it was brewing as Mars spent, you know, the first degrees of Sagittarius on that Neptune sun node square. And he, he made it happen, right? The Chiron also opposing Chiron. And, but what I, you know, what is very important in this chart is that this same transiting North Node that we observe on the Ascendant of Israel ends up on Egalamir's Jupiter in Libra. Jupiter represents sovereignty. It re it's the ruler of that Mars, you know, that that is feeling uh, justified. So it's interesting to see how this North Node on his Jupiter gives him a sense of victory and achieving his ideological goals. But as he neutralizes the peace process and he takes down the Prime Minister Rabin, it leads to the ascension of this newcomer, Benjamin Netanyahu, who is elected about six to seven months after the assassination. And lo and behold, Netanyahu's son is right on that Jupiter. So in a way, Gigalamir is this instrument of sabotaging the peace by handing, you know, serving as the, the one who's going to swing the pendulum to the other extreme when there's a whole movement advancing towards negotiation, rebuilding of trust, and, and possibly cohabitation, he comes in and swings the pendulum to the other extreme, which has to do with Libra. Libra has to do with the swing of the pendulum. This is why as much as Libra can be a sign of peace, it is also a sign of extremes, from one extreme to another. And so he pass, takes the baton and hands it over to Netanyahu symbolically, spiritually. And Netanyahu in 1996 um, is elected as the prime minister. That, you know, May 1996, which is seven months after the assassination in November 95. And we see that Netanyahu now 
as he is elected, the transiting nodes are on his MC. You know, it, it, we don't we're not sure that the time of birth is exact. There are different takes on it, um, but it's close enough. And so in this chart, we do see um, the North Node on his MC, on his Neptune, and he rises to public office. He's close to a Jupiter return, and the Moon is on that critical 27 degree uh, Libra. Interesting to also see the role of Chiron in all this. You see that Netanyahu is elected with the North Node on Chiron. Israel is created with the South Node conjunct Chiron, the wounded, the wounds coming from the wound. And, and so uh, the assassination occurs when Egalamir has a Chiron, Chiron opposition in his own chart. So there are many interesting Chiron signatures as well. Um, so BB Netanyahu begins his reign. He lasts about three years in power. Um, and here is his chart with Rabin, who was just assassinated. Rabin was, uh, you know, a fighter in many ways. He he was someone who initially was not pro peace. He was a warrior, and you see that Rabin South Node was in Aries, conjunct the Moon, which was you know defend the the mother nation at at all costs so he was himself quite brutal in you know in his um years uh, in in the in the army as a commander but he embraced his north node to advance negotiation understand the other side and and do what a libra north node should do on the other hand, Netanyahu is coming from a south node in Libra and going into Aries, which for him, in a way, compromise and negotiation is perhaps perceived as a weakness. And he's, you know, focused on the north node to uh, claim sovereignty, to be, you know, to fight for what, he believes is is right. So you see one bring comes from war to peace and the other one comes from peace to war. Um, it, you know, it, it, it's very diluted. I'm simplifying this, but it, it you know, it can be very um, graphic. Interesting that Netanyahu's Pluto also lands on Rabin's ascendant in Leo, among other things. So we also see here how he rises on his corpse, so to speak. So Netanyahu lasts about three years. Then another prime minister, Ehud Barak, returns to the peace negotiation with Arafat and makes more progress to advance um, uh, negotiation and to possibly even talks about splitting Jerusalem in a uh, capital of two countries. And Yasser Arafat, who was then the leader of the Palestinian, refuses, which was extremely controversial and a big blow to that sense of trust that do they really want peace? You know, we're offering to split our capital city and it's not enough. And obviously Arafat had his own strings being pulled 
and and a lot of things that um were difficult for him to uh, to compromise for so what ended up happening is that a second palestinian uprising uh, began around the year 2000 and that was the end of that peace process by all means it you know it turned into an extremely extremely violent situation where there were constant suicide attacks and constant um violence um with this uprising that's when israel decided to build this infamous wall to prevent uh, militants from crossing uh, from the Palestinian territories to Israel. Then Ariel Sharon rose to prominence and he became the prime minister. And he is the one who initiated the withdrawal of the Gaza Strip. So the Gaza Strip was um, had many Jewish settlements, many Israeli settlements. So the Gazan had to share that space with those settlers. And Ariel Sharon, even though, again, he was a commander and, and warrior at heart, decided to withdraw unilaterally. So without negotiation, just... He decided to pull away uh, from Gaza and leave Gaza to the Gazans and to the Palestinians. And that was in 2005, which was in itself a controversial move. And Bibi Benjamin Netanyahu did not approve of that move. He wanted to keep the settlers there and he resigned from the party. As Ariel Sharon built a new party and was about to be re-elected, he was hit by a stroke six months after the withdrawal from Gaza and became a vegetable. And he died several years later. So he was in incapacitated. Um, that was January. 2006. And the nodes were again in Libra Aries. This happens weeks after Benjamin Netanyahu returns to the political scene. So he was first prime minister after Rabin was assassinated for three years. Then he thought about, you know, retreating and, and uh, having a business career and, and withdraw from politics. He returns to, to politics and he returns to lead the Likud party, which is the right wing party of Israel, as Sharon builds a new party. So Bibi returns to the leadership of the Likud in 2005, December 19, 2005, as he has a nodal return in Libra Aries. And Sharon get, has a stroke two and a half weeks later on January 4th, 2006. So it's interesting how Benjamin Netanyahu rises to power shows up each time there is a prime minister who is suggesting a, um, a division of land as part of a, advancing the peace cause. And both these prime ministers who advance the cause of peace are neutralized. One is neutralized by an assassination, the other one by a stroke. It is well known in the Israeli 
um, you know, reality that these two prime ministers were cursed. The curse is called Pulsa de Nura. Both Rabid and Sharon were cursed, and soon after they were cursed, they became incapacitated. And Benjamin Netanyahu rises as they are removed from power. So interesting how these forces at play have him apparently as an agent who will prevent peace. So Benjamin Netanyahu pretty much from then on is um, is leading Israel on and off. You know, he 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 was pretty much from two thousand and nine to two thousand uh, to now to two thousand twenty four. So it's it's kind of a fifteen year reign with just a little break in between. And in the past fifteen years, the settlers have, you know increase their hold on the Palestinian lands. And so this this whole concept of uh, a two-state solution is, is practically ignored by his government. And, and so we now come to this time, to the last time he was brought to office, and that is after he was accused of corruption and after he faced trial, uh, he managed to again find his way to be elected. And in order, he, he is elected on such weak grounds that he has to form a coalition with further extreme right extreme right religious parties, extreme right militant parties. And one of them is um, called Ben Gvir, which is part of his coalition to stay in power. So he's basically at the mercy of these extreme right uh, agents because without them, he doesn't have a majority and he loses power and he cannot afford to not be in power because just like Trump, he has corruption trials looming and he could go to jail. So his only way out of jail is to stay in power. This also led to massive reforms in, uh, in Israel where he wanted, you probably already forgot about this, but he wanted to change the judiciary system and minimize the influence of the Supreme Court in order to give more agency to his office and to those in power. So less regulation, less uh, balancing forces for the government. And obviously this led to massive protests all through 2003 to stop these reforms and to possibly destabilize his power. And then October 7 events occur. Um, in 2023. And what I'm showing here is how in the inner wheel, we see the assassination of Rabin in 1995. And on the outer wheel, I show the Hamas attack in October 2023. And we see the exact reverse nodes. And we see Pluto right on the Uranus Neptune of the assassination. 
So it is critical to understand how these two events are linked astrologically and spiritually as a major rupture in the peace process and instrumentally you know netanyahu is in the thick of these crossroads um this is the chart of israel with the hamas attack in october 2023 you see another out of planet this time pluto on the ic and the nodes on the ascendant with mars square the pluto on the node any planet that's on the node is a planet that is on steroids you know it's intensely um amplified so we see how vulnerable the situation is you know this is something i was talking about already in september how precarious no, uh, october november is going to be for for israel so we see this this square as an echo of the assassination of rabin in 1995 this then with uranus neptune on the ic and the notes reversed in um, Aries, Aries Libra. Um, so we we see that Pluto on on the ICs, you know, shows these uh, extreme vulnerability of the country where civilians have been targeted and kidnapped. You know, if it's kids, if it's elderly. Uh, it's indiscriminate, and it it touches that very deep wound, and it creates instability, and then leads to this extremely aggressive retaliation that causes uh, incredible damage to civilians on the other side. So, you know, this is another example of how the, the chart of countries can definitely tell us a story where you know we are in this plutonian times in this region and there's death and death and the death of innocence when we look at um netanyahu and his coalition ben gvir is one of the most radical elements um, of his party. So um, Ben Gvir is also born on an eclipse with the sun on the nodes, sun Jupiter on the nodes. In Taurus, you remember where Israel North Node is? In Taurus, 14. So Ben Gvir has a nodal interaction with the state chart. And he has a sun excuse me, a Mars-Saturn conjunction in Cancer that actually is very angular to Netanyahu's uh, Libra planets. So we see that even though they are both fanatics and they are both uh, intensely aggressive, um, they don't get along. You know, they, they push each other around and there is strife in, between them, which is both, you know, a, a suggestion that this, this coalition will probably implode at some point. But what happens when you have strong Mars elements in a relationship dynamic is that as long as there's a villain outside it feeds the mars you know they there's someone bad enough that we need to fight so it keeps us from fighting between ourselves the moment the external target the the external villain is removed they start eating up each other and so we can anticipate 
that this is an extremely volatile coalition and, and relationship. Looking ahead, we are now uh, early March and at a critical point where a ceasefire is being negotiated. And unless this ceasefire is accepted by both sides, the risk is that the Israeli offensive will then attack Rafa, which is another stronghold uh, in the south of Gaza, where a multitude of civilians are, are escaping, who have escaped the north of Gaza are now situated there. And it's the beginning of Ramadan. So March 10 is a time that is extremely critical as a turning, as a potential turning point for, for the worst or possibly for uh, a respite, a downgrade of the intensity and the hostilities. And yet we see that Netanyahu, you know, during this period between March 7 and, and March 20th, is going to have these Mars in Aquarius opposition to his natal Pluto and to his natal Mars. So we see that this is not a time where he is compromising. But it is a time where he feels extremely pressured because Mars in Aquarius has to do with his allies. Whether it's his own party or whether it's the countries that do support Israel. So we see that the Aquarian, the friends, are opposing his sovereignty, Leo. And it leads to friction. So this ceasefire is under tremors. It is not stable. And we don't see really a period of rest. Um, whether this Mars opposition will serve to actually tighten the leash and make him understand he cannot do as he wish or whether he's going to rebel and just go for it and, and cause, you know, intensify um, the attacks is left to see. Later in April, the same Mars comes to conjoin Saturn at 14 degrees Pisces. And this happens to position in opposition to his natal Saturn. So another incredibly critical milestone that could see him be extremely weakened. This Mars in Pisces conjunct Saturn also speaks of marine wars, naval hostilities, uh, which already are happening in the Red Sea, but, you know, it could get worse. Um, it could also, you know, it could also show that internally his sovereignty, his leadership, Saturn, his control is being shaken and he starts to erode. So there's some kind of serious threat to, um, to his leadership around that time. Now, when we look at Sinwar, who is um, the mastermind of the Hamas attack, and also known to be an extremely, you know, wild card. You know, he's known for for being a psychopath, even by his own people. Um, you know, brutally silencing opposition and burying people under concrete. All kinds of horror stories and. You know, it is also interesting, quote unquote, to hear him at this point say that the greater the amount of casualty in Gaza, 
uh, the more pressure there is on Israel to stop the, you know, to agree to a ceasefire. So he's using, you know, the death of his own people as leverage for negotiation. And he's waiting to claim his victory, which will be basically a victory that the Palestinian cause is now wide awake and that the whole world is, is now invested in the Palestinian cause. And it is a victory in that sense. Uh, but the, the amount of sacrifice is um, unbearable. We see that in his chart, another Mars in Leo. We talk about Mars on the nodes being on steroids. Think about Mars Saturn opposition on the nodes, square the ruler of the sun in Scorpio, conjunct Neptune. So, you know, one of the things he keeps saying is that I will not die humiliated. I will not die in a prison. So that Mars in Leo, you know, that pride makes him as intransigent, as stubborn as the other Mars in Leo on the Israeli side. You know, both are, you know, uh, consumed by their own uh, pride. The sun, Neptune, speaks of the martyrdom you know, the, the willingness to sacrifice, to sacrifice his people, to sacrifice himself. And, you know, there, there is here the jihad mentality of um, the holy cause is more important than human life. So right now, you know, he is also in the thick of these bars opposition. And Pluto coming on his nodes. So we see that he's under incredible stress. You know, I suspected he might be neutralized during this opposition of Mars Mars, but he made it. So there's a lot more we could unpack. Obviously, these charts are charged with meanings. Uh, we can go back in time, you know, compare them all. But needless to say that with Pluto and Mars on the you know in this fixed uh, configuration, there's there's a lot of volatility and risk. I do believe that he is at the end of his rope in many ways, not just because of the Mars, but because Saturn is about to oppose his Pluto, and Saturn Pluto is is unforgiving. So whether you know, the the Mars opposition causes injuries. And we also know he was, he had brain surgery when he was in an Israeli prison. They saved him from, from dying. And when he was in, in prison, you know, Aquarius has to do with brain. So we see how he's vulnerable still to brain injuries. Um, now, you know, with Saturn opposing his Pluto, his own grip is weakening. And so we see that both leaders uh, in this conflict have to embrace the Piscean dissolving, you know, the, the need to overcome that uh, stubbornness and and pride and uncompromising approach and, and brutality and violence and embrace a softer uh, approach. And if they do not, the risk of them um, dissolving, you know, against their will, it could occur. Fast forward we see that the Uranus-Jupiter conjunction end of April is happening on Israel's natal sun and on the North Node. My, you know, it's obvious that it's going to be some kind of milestone. And perhaps it is going to be a time 
where there are negotiations, where there is some kind of a um, breakthrough because Jupiter, Uranus bring um, either fanaticism and extremism, which has already been happening, or they can bring common sense and a higher mind over, you know, lower expression of aggression. So it elevates the vibration to greater understanding. That is the hope. That is the higher frequency of this conjunction. So a breakthrough could happen. You know, I suspect that if there is a deal with hostages and, you know, the, the cessation of hostilities, it could happen around the end of um, April and, and May. So let's pray for peace. Let's understand that this is tied to older cycles and, and very complex cycles. And let's also realize that this holds not only significance for the people living there, but for the whole world. So there's something about the Middle East, you know, whether it's Mesopotamia, whether it's ancient Egypt, whether it's the biblical time or even the Hellenistic time that, you know, have forged where we are. It's a cradle of civilization, of modern civilization. So as we see it being torn down, uh, we have to ask ourselves what's happening to all of us. So once again, Let's let's visualize that Pluto in Aquarius brings sense, brings reason, brings higher understanding um, there and in the Ukraine and in Russia. Thank you for listening. I know it's a sensitive topic and I know it may trigger some people. I can expect many thumbs down on the video. But otherwise, uh, if you do feel inspired by this kind of research, do su subscribe to the channel and support the work. Uh, you can buy the books and get readings and share the good words. Thank you.